Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial will show you how to paint an under the sea painting on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. So I'm using one of those stretched canvases and I'm gonna go ahead and get started. So I have four colors on my palette and I'll be using this one inch flat wash brush. If you don't have a one inch brush, you can use a three quarter, wash brush, so any kind of medium size flat brush for this. And the colors I have on my palette are titanium white, bright aqua green, phthalo blue, and unbleached titanium. So for the ocean background colors of this painting, we're gonna do a gradient that goes from light to dark to the sandy color on the bottom. And I dipped my big flat brush in the white. And I'm gonna start at the top, and I'm gonna do these curved strokes. So imagine this sort of half circle thing going on with the color white at the very top of the canvas. So this is the brightest part of our ocean water where that light would be hitting the top upper part of the water. I'm gonna go down a little bit and then I'm gonna grab some of the aqua color on my brush without rinsing the blunt, the white off the brush. And I'm gonna gently blend that aqua back up into the white so you see what happens when you kind of paint over it and you blend upwards going in a curved half circle direction. Um, you don't wanna over blend that area to where the white disappears. So just blend it up a little bit and then work your way down. So we're gonna eventually go all the way down the canvas and we're gonna continue to paint in these all curved stroke directions. So as I'm going down and blending the white into the aqua, I even grabbed a little bit more white on my brush and that helped to blend the aqua down. And then when I get to about almost a halfway point, I'm using almost all aqua and none of the white. So you're just gonna keep painting in curved directions and grabbing a little bit of white and blending back upwards. So those bits of streaks of white in there kind of help give it a, the water texture and that, that light that's hitting that upper area of the water. And I'm gonna go back up there with a little bit more white and work on that transition where that white blends to the aqua. But don't over blend it because you wanna have the streaks of white in there to give it that pretty water texture. So I'm gonna continue down the canvas with this bright aqua green. I'm pretty much at the halfway point now. So I wanna just keep going down with this aqua a little bit further because I'll be blending my phthalo blue, which is that darker blue in there. Um, the blending of the darker blue is a little bit tricky, but we wanna make sure we have a good amount of aqua there on the bottom. And of course, I'm grabbing a little bit of white and that white helps to spread it out and um, get it to blend some more. So without rinsing your brush, grab a little bit of phthalo on your palette and mix it with the aqua green a little bit. So this is phthalo blue mixed with aqua green. And you really need to work this area right here. So this is where that aqua transitions to the phthalo blue. I'm painting over that area several times and working that paint, make, forcing it to mix together. You can see how many times I have to paint over that area. So you gotta keep stroking it until that blue and aqua mesh together because we're going from a very light color to a very dark color kind of a tricky transition so you got to really work that paint to get it to blend and I'm going to lightly blend that darker blue up into the aqua uh, but not too much because we don't want the uh, we don't want to lose our pretty aqua color at the top and so when you feel happy with the way it blended up there you can continue your way down the canvas with more of the phthalo blue so you're just continuing to paint in curved strokes you don't want to change the horizontal at any point. It's going to be curved strokes all the way down the canvas. Um, I'm grabbing a little bit of white in there and I'm going to blend a little bit of white at the bottom. So we have that darker, darker area and then all of a sudden our blue gets light light over here on the bottom because we're gonna be transitioning to the bottom part of our ocean floor, which is gonna have that sandy color. And transitioning to, from that dark blue to the beige color is gonna be really tricky uh, unless we have the white. So it did a little bit of white on the bottom. You wanna rinse your brush next because we're gonna be doing the sand color. So rinse all that blue and aqua and white and load your brush in just that sand color. So this is called unbleached titanium. It's a beige sand color, and we're gonna paint the, the floor of our ocean. So again, we're doing in the curved strokes, 
I'm applying that beige to the blue. It blends very nicely in that area because we added that light, the white in there, so it's lighter. So, But you want to work that transition area. You'll see that blue kind of drags into your beige, and that's okay if it does that. Just don't let your beige turn all the way blue. You want to keep a lot of that beige showing, but if the blue kind of seeps into it, that is okay. So I'm gonna really work that transition area of the beige to that light blue. Um, a word of advice with this beige color, it is a very um, strong color because there's a lot of titanium white, so it's very opaque. Um, you only need a little bit, so a lot actually goes, a, a little actually goes a long way with this beige color. So just a little bit of mount is all you need for this sandy area. So, um, what I'm gonna do next is kind of define my ocean floor. So the beige kind of goes flat a little bit in the middle. So I'm just gonna use the tip of my brush to kind of make a flat line. And it, it still kind of goes up a little bit, but I all I'm doing is defining where that floor is. So that floor in the distance turns a little bit blue, but I defined that part where that sand's gonna be. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put my flat brush to the side and grab a round brush. We're gonna start doing some of the um, features in our ocean, starting with this sort of cave coral thing we have going on way in the distance. If you look really closely, there's a blue cave thing on the left. And um, so when we do this ocean painting, there's a lot of things that we want to paint in the distance first before we paint the things that are on the bottom and closer to us. So we're going to paint, um, we're going to mix blue and white together. And I'm going to use my round brush to define this cavey area right here. So I'm just going to paint a wavy line and um, do the base of it. And when you do the blue and white combination, it doesn't have to be the same amount. And I'm going to fill that cave in going in circular strokes. And I'm going to uh, add some maybe darker blue in there. So you can see how light this is. It, it practically blends in with the rest of the ocean because this is way in the distance. And we'll be able to paint some fun plants and seaweed that are growing on this piece of cave or coral or, what, or whatever it may be. And I'm going to lighten up the edge of it so that we can see it better. And then I'm doing circular strokes. I'm sorry, my hand is covering that in that camera angle shot. But all I'm doing is painting in circular strokes, blending that lighter color into the KV area. And then you want to pay attention to the base of it. So you can see where our bottom of our sandy area is. If you need to go back with some more beige to go and redefine that bottom area. So just grab some beige on your brush and redefine that bottom sandy area of the ocean. If you wanted to do another cave on the right side, you can, or it's one that's smaller or larger. But what we're going to do next is add some blue seaweed growing on our cave. So I'm just gonna use the same brush and the same blue mixed with a little bit of white. And I'm gonna start over here on the left and I'm gonna paint this It's very similar to painting tree branches. I'm gonna water it down slightly to get that flow to work a little bit better. Let's start at the bottom and brush upwards and we're just doing this wavy line of seaweed and it kind of wisps away up and goes to a point. And then I'm just going to have it branch off into different pieces. Um, notice how I'm loading my brush in some white and different amounts of blue. That'll give your blue seaweed color a little bit of variation. So it's not all the same um, shade of blue, um, but also the light could be hitting it different ways so it appears to be different um, lightnesses in that blue. So I'm just going to paint wavy lines kind of stemming off, curving upwards. Imagine the seaweeds floating in the ocean. So it'd be very wavy and kind of all swaying towards the right. So you can do as much of this as you want, um, but this is our upper piece of seaweed that's kind of in the distance.
Next, I'm gonna do some of the green seaweed that you see in this painting. So I'm gonna load some two greens on my palette, light olive green and hooker's green hue permanent. So a light green and a dark green. You don't have to use those exact shades of green, but when I work with greenery, I like to use a light and a dark. Um, well, we're still gonna use that round brush, that number eight round brush. I'm gonna mix the two together so we get kind of a medium green, twist it. A Little bit of water on that brush gets it to be nice and flowy. Twisting it gets that paint to be right there on the tip. So when you paint your curvy line, it seems to flow better when you get that paint right there on the tip with the right amount of um, just a bit of water on it. So I'm kind of the same thing I did with the blue. Um, I am putting a little bit more pressure on my brush to start off with and then I'm kind of um, releasing the pressure. It gives it that wavy um, different thicknesses in that seaweed. I'm going to freshen up some white on my brush as well. Get some lighter colors of that green in there. So this is just a very long piece of green seaweed that's going up. The top pieces, I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. Perhaps the white from the uh, ocean, the light from the ocean is hitting that area so it's lighter. A little, a uh, few little leaves that are kind of attached to these pieces. So I'm doing different shades of the green and the white and I'm just pressing my brush to create a small oval shape on that seaweed. So there's a lot of different fun, different styles of seaweed and coral you can do in this painting. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. If you're doing this with your child, you can study the coral reef and look at the different kinds of species of coral and um, underwater plants and you can decide to paint different kinds if you want. You can plan your painting out. Um, so just some fun different examples of what you can do to change this painting and make it your own. But I'm just going to continue to add these rounded leaf shapes on this piece of seaweed. And um, have one piece that kind of goes outwards and overlaps. So the trick with this is just to vary your darks and lights with the greens. Um, we have the light. And this is a step that probably could have been done before the seaweed, but we still have time to do this here. So we have the light beams that are coming down from the top part where that light is hitting the top part of the ocean. And what we're going to do with the titanium white, so make sure your brush is all rinsed off, grab just the titanium white on that. And we're going to do the, the rays of light that are coming down. So I'm going to load the white just on the tip. You don't need a lot of white on your brush, just a little bit. And you're going to do this very quickly. You're just going to stroke downwards very quickly. And now you're holding that brush very lightly. So you're not pressing hard because if you press hard, your line will be way too thick and it won't go to a tip at the end of it. And you're just really quickly painting that um, crisp pointed line that's beaming down from that top of the piece. This is where the light is beaming down into the ocean water. So I'm trying my best not to get the white to go over that seaweed, trying to get it to go around it. It went over the blue seaweed a little bit, but that's okay. So just keep painting as many light beams as you would like in this area. Again, not very much paint, very, very lightly. And uh, make sure you're going at different angles. The ray is going around in a kind of a that half circle direction. Next, I'm going to paint a piece of green seaweed that's kind of growing off of this cliffy coral area. Without even rinsing my brush, I loaded the hooker's green, that darker green on there, and I'm doing a leaf, a curvy leaf that is kind of thick on the bottom. It goes to a point, and I'm going to do different variations of the green. So I loaded some of that light olive green in there mixed with that white. And just remember it's under the ocean so the water will be making it move and sway in a very wavy direction off towards the right. So I'm just doing different shades of green, different layers of these pointed leaf shapes for this piece of seaweed. I'm gonna do another same style of plant in this area, but this one is the 
its home is right there in the sand. So same thing, the different variations of the darker and the lighter green and white. Same style of wavy plant that starts at the bottom thick and goes to a point. I'm going to introduce a new color on my palette here. This is cadmium yellow hue. Rinse that brush off. It's medium, cad yellow medium hue. You can use any yellow for this step. It doesn't have to be that exact one. But to introduce a different color of seaweed here, because we have a lot of green going on, I'm going to do one with the yellow. The thing with this yellow is it's not going to look very um, opaque unless you add a little bit of white to it. So I'm going to make sure I load my brush in a little bit of white and that yellow. And I'm just doing it's kind of a different style, more slender and more pointy, I suppose, but just a piece of yellow plant growing in the distance, kind of further away in the sand. So it's fun to do different colors and shapes with your different seaweed um, designs. It makes your painting very colorful. The coral reef is very colorful and um, we're gonna do quinacridone magenta next. So I'm gonna paint this coral piece. Um, these are gonna be uh, kind of these cylinder shape prongs that are growing out here. I'll, I will demonstrate that. So I have quinacridone and the white. Load it in both of those colors. So you can see from the finished sample what I'm painting here. So this piece starts out thick at the top, kind of a cylinder shape at the top, and then it goes more narrow at the bottom. Um, so you just it kind of doesn't go to a point on the bottom, just gets more narrow and they're attached to each other. So do a sort of cylinder shape at the top, curve down and it gets more narrow. And notice how I'm loading my brush in different amounts of the magenta and the white. That'll give your piece a lot of different color variation in this coral design that I'm making. So you can do as many different arms as you want. I'm going to do a branching coral piece down here below with using just the quinacridone, so not the lighter color in there. So this one's just going to show up darker, it gives it more contrast. Um, towards the bottom. Just a branching coral piece. It kind of thick at the bottom and branches out to a point in different directions. Next I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm going to do another greenery seaweed piece in the lower left. So this is going to be um, another longer piece and it's going to have leaves on it so I'm going to do this with a lighter green and so I'm loading um, the olive green mixed with a little bit of white on my brush and this is going to start at the bottom and it's going to be a long wavy piece that goes upwards. This is going to be overlapping that other piece kind of gets busy in this area. Um, you don't have to do this if you feel like there's too much greenery right here, too much seaweed, kind of too risky to go over this. You don't have to do this, but this was just the direction I wanted to take. I wanted one of these wavy seaweed pieces that has the leaves on it. So I'm just doing the different variations of the green on this piece. So small rounded leaves, some are lighter, some are darker. Next, I'm going to rinse off and freshen up some titanium white. So I'm going to do a starfish that is laying on the ocean floor. You can see from the final results where that starfish is going to lay. 
And before we do a bright orange color, we have to white it out first. So if you want that bright orange to show up, you have to use the white first. I am using the still the number eight round brush and titanium white. And I'm painting my starfish as if it was laying down. So the five points, um, it's thicker towards the middle part and it branches off to get thinner at the tip. So there's our starfish. Before we can paint it orange, we're gonna have to let that white to dry. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna load some dioxazine purple. And there's a really dark coral area on the bottom of our painting. So that would be the foreground. And this really adds to the whole layered effect that this under the sea painting gives off. Um, but before I do the coral thing, I'm actually going to use this dioxazine purple to paint the darker areas in our um, coral pieces over here where the, we have the different columns of coral. Um, that top part has kind of an opening. And so I'm just using that darker purple to paint an oval at the top of each of those pieces. Then I'm going to use this dark purple to define our coral area that's down here at the bottom. So I'm just going to do a wavy line that kind of goes downwards and it's going to overlap our branching coral a little bit. There's openings in this coral piece. So I'm going to do define my two openings, so just circular organic shapes. And over here on the left, there's a coral piece. It's smaller and a different shape, but it also has an opening. And then now that I defined the shape of that area, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint it in. So it's a combination of the darker purple with the quinacridone magenta, and I'm just filling it in with these really curvy strokes, trying to give it that texture, and just grabbing different amounts of the dioxazine purple, grabbing a little bit of the quinacridone magenta and I'll be even adding a little bit of white in there as well but I'm filling this in solid it's a darker area of this painting it's in the foreground um, and it gives it a lot of gives our painting a lot of depth and dimension because we have different things in different layers and different distances so a little bit of white especially closer to the edges as if that light were hitting it in that area and just curvy strokes kind of blending those purples together and then when you grab the white, you can create some more layers in your coral by blending that white into the purple. Like for example, down here, I'm adding a little bit of white in this area, it makes it look like there's a different layer of coral in that area on the bottom. So the same thing over on the right, grabbing the white, the dioxazine and the quinacridone and just kind of letting those colors blend together, do their thing to fill in this coral piece. We're going to rinse and dry next and load our palette with cad orange hue so this is the orange that bright orange that's going to be on our starfish and it's going to be used for our clownfish later on in this painting but now that our starfish is dry we can go ahead and paint a coat of orange over that starfish so just painting over all of that white is all i'm doing right here in this step I'm going to add a little bit of shadow underneath our starfish and some of our coral pieces that are on the sand. So rinse the brush off, grab a little bit of the blue and water it down ever so slightly. So very, very thin. Um, test that out first because if it's too dark, it's going to not do the... Um, it's gonna take over too fast. So I did these very, very, very thin horizontal lines under those two coral pieces, but I'm also doing it under the starfish as well, um, watering it down even more there. Um, so that really watery light, um, the really watery phthalo blue is gonna give it this effect and almost like a watercolor technique. So I'm painting over just the, the under part of that starfish. I'll use my finger to kind of smudge it a little bit and then drag it down into the sandy area. Um, you can even grab a little bit of the beige color on your brush and do horizontal strokes just under that piece. It gives it 
um, some texture in the sand, but it helps to create the illusion that there's a little bit of a, a shadowy area under that object. And it makes it look like that object is right there attached to that ground. So it's not just floating in that area. And I like the look this um, horizontal strokes of that beige color gives. Kind of makes the ocean floor look like some of that light is hitting the bottom of that ocean floor a little bit. So if you like that effect too, you can take that beige and just kind of do very loose wavy strokes on the bottom. And then I'm doing the dots, the little texture dots on the starfish. So with that beige color and the round brush and just doing that paint right there on the tip of the bristles and painting little dots all over that star. Next I'm going to rinse and dry and I'm going to see if I can get some more um, contrast with my leaf or my greenery that's going on right here. I'm going to lighten the front piece so that it will stand out a little bit better from the back pieces because it's all the same green and it's kind of meshing together. So I just added a very, very light green to that area going over some of the leaves in here as well. There are certainly a lot of details going on in this painting. So if you feel like, oh, this is way too many details. I don't want to do that many details. You can definitely simplify this. You don't have to do all the tiny di different things that I'm adding. And you can, like I said earlier, customize it, make it your own. So this is a smaller brush I'm using. I believe it's a number one round brush. So it's just a smaller round brush than my other one. I grabbed it because I want to do these really tiny dots on this branching coral piece. I like how these white dots provide um, some really pretty contrast and texture in that area. So I'm just doing little white dots on that piece. And then, so I'm gonna go in and outline the top part of our column coral piece over here, the rounded part at the top. So I'm just taking the white and I'm not outlining the entire oval. I'm outlining about three quarters of that oval, but you can see what it's doing. It's um, creating that bright area and defining that shape. So I'm just outlining that piece at the top. And then, so the next part of this painting, I'm gonna demonstrate all those fish that are the school of fish that are at the very top of the piece that kind of go off into the distance into the lighted area. So this part takes a little bit of time, sort of tedious, but I'll show you um, very loosely how to do these fish. Remember they're way in the distance so we don't see much detail on it. We did like an oval shape and then the little tail at the end. And then I'm just going to make smaller ones, ones that are maybe slightly bigger. Um, but this one's going to be slightly smaller, a little bit higher up. So same thing, oval shape, little tail at the end. And you can add the white to your blue to make lighter versions of that fish. So the light may be hitting them, but also if they're further in the distance, they would be lighter. So um, some of these would be so far away that really you wouldn't see the fin or the shape. It would just be a small little dot. So I'm just doing small little marks with my paintbrush to make that shape. So I'm just gonna keep painting more fish shapes all throughout this area. Um, some of them are going in different angles upwards. Again, it helps to vary your blue, some lighter tints, darker tints, and just keep continuing that technique until you have as many school of fish as you want. You create depth by making the smaller ones higher in the canvas and the larger ones lower in the canvas. So that makes it look like those fish are all um, swimming off upwards into the light part of the top part of the ocean. And so I'm just gonna keep repeating this technique and I'll go silent here for a little bit as I do this step.
The next part of this tutorial is going to demonstrate the fish and I recommend drawing these with a chalk pencil before you just start painting them in. Um, but I'm going to be drawing the seahorse first. So this is just a regular pencil but it happens to be a chalk pencil so it's going to show up white on the canvas. So my little seahorse here, I'm going to start with the circle for his head. And then I'm going to do kind of like an S shape down. It's going to curve forwards where his belly is. And then it's going to spiral down where his tail is going to be. And then I'm going to form the um, his back part of his body. So I'm going to curve outwards from his head. And I'm going to curve around for his tail. So you can see where his belly part is, where it takes that shape. The spine of his back curves inwards and then his um, mouth nose piece um, trumpets out and then he's got the little spikes on his back and then I'm just drawing over my drawing again kind of finalizing the shape of it so when we have the basic shape of the seahorse um, I'm going to go ahead and paint that in white first. So I'm using that little round brush, that number two smaller round brush. And I'm just going to go in and white this all out. I recommend with all these creatures that we're adding in our ocean scene that you do, you draw the shape of them first and then paint them white because if you just painted them in whatever color they're going to be, it's not going to show up super bright against the dark background. So the white gives it that opaque layer it needs so that the color will show up nice and bright. So I'm just using the white paint to paint in the shape of the seahorse. And for the little spikes on his back, I'm just doing tiny, tiny strokes of, you don't have to make them pointed, just little tiny strokes on his back. So I'll rinse that off, set it to the side and grab your pencil again. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw our next fish. This one's going to be an angel fish. If you know about my tutorials, I have an angel fish tutorial that's similar background to this painting and it includes the angel fish that are up close. I'll link that if you want to check it out, but these are the same exact um, shape and colors of those angelfish, only a bit smaller. So I'm going to draw the outline of that fish. It's got that pointed back and um, the pointed tail and the fins that kind of dangle down on the bottom and kind of a narrow nose feature, uh, mouth and I'll make that darker so that you can see. So there's his top point, the pieces that kind of dangle down on the bottom, another fin, and then he's got his back fin that goes to a point, two points. And then same thing, you wanna go ahead and use your round brush to fill that in solid white so that when that white dries, we can go in and add more of those colors into our angel fish. Next, I'm gonna do two little clownfish that are gonna be situated down here towards the bottom. So with the clownfish, we have a narrow oval shape, kind of a rounded triangle for the fin, two half circles on the top, two half circles on the bottom for the fins. Very, very basic shape. And then you wanna go ahead and fill that in solid white with your little round brush. I'm going to make his nose a little bit more pointed towards the edge. So I've said this before, but you can customize this if you want to draw different sea creatures in your picture other than the ones that I'm drawing. You can do, most certainly do that. So I'm doing a second little clownfish. This one's going to be overlapping our seaweed there. So again, draw your shape and then fill it in solid white. Thank you. 
Next, we're going to go ahead and start filling in the color of our creature. So assuming our seahorse is dry by now, same brush, same that little round brush. And I'm going to do this one yellow. So this is the cad yellow medium hue color. And I'm just going to go over my entire shape with that yellow color. I will be adding some orange shading in there as well. If you look at the final um, part of this, it, there is a little bit of orange in our seahorse. And obviously you can change the color if you want a different color seahorse, if you wanted it to be blue or magenta, I chose yellow. A little bit of orange on my brush and I'll do the spikes on his back with that orange color. And then I'm going to take that orange and add a little bit of shading on the tail and then on the front part of the belly and blend it back in with the yellow. It gives our seahorse a couple different colors. Um, for the eye, we'll do a white dot. So dip the back of your brush in the white dot, not the black one, but the white one. I did the black one on accident first. So a little bit, a little white dot. You'll wait for that to dry and then um, do a black dot for his eye. And then I'm just gonna kind of fix his mouth right there. I'm gonna do the angel fish next. So with the small round brush and the yellow, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the yellow parts of our angel fish. So starting closer to the edge and the top part of the fin. So I'm gonna paint that stripe area yellow. And then he's got another yellow stripe. Um, leave a gap between the two yellow stripes because that gap is going to be painted black. So I'm going to make this a little bit thicker. It goes to the bottom fin and it goes up to the top fin. And keep in mind these creatures are really tiny so it's so tedious to get all these details on here. So try not to get caught up in um, making your creature look too realistic because of the fact that it's such a tiny area and our brush can only do so much detail work before we drive ourselves crazy here. Um, but with the black, I'm going to go ahead and do the back tail. So that tail is black and I'm just going to have it kind of go outwards to more of a point. This middle stripe goes up to the top part of his fin and gets a little bit thicker in the middle and goes downwards. And then this part of the black stripe, again, kind of the same thing. It goes up to the top part of his fin and a little bit downwards to that bottom part of the fin. I'm going to add a little bit more white, second coat of white to this area because this part of our angel fish is going to be white. A little bit of white. Um, highlight on the tail and I'm um, going to have his fins kind of dangle down a little bit more. You want to make sure when you're rinsing these round brushes, especially the tiny detail round brushes, that you're wiping them because they end up dripping water down. You don't want that to happen. So I did the black dot eye on the seahorse and the angelfish eye and then I did a horizontal line for his mouth. And then I'm gonna go in and start doing our clownfish. So the clownfish orange is kind of a mixture of the orange and yellow, so kind of a golden color. I'm gonna freshen up some of that orange on my palette there. So yellow and orange mixed together. And then I'm gonna go in and do our um, orange stripes on our clownfish. So these are really tiny, so it's kind of tedious. So don't get too caught up in so many details here. Just be very loose. Um, so start with the head, the tail, and then two stripes. Same thing for this fish, the tail, two stripes, and our head. Then we can always wait for that to dry and go back over with more white if we need to fix up the white stripes again. But there are also, um, there's black on our clownfish as well. And I'll show you how to add the black features on it. So rinse your brush, dry it. 
grab the black. You just want to make sure that you really dry and wipe the brush because you don't want water dripping down. So little black dots for the eyes, black on the edge of the tail, and then I'm going to just do a um, little dot of black on the top fins and the bottom fins. So I'm just doing little dots and then I'll do one black stripe right in the middle. So that just gives the impression that we know that they're clownfish, not too super detailed. There's not much that round brush can go into detailed with. So there are the clownfish. And I'm going to go in and do a little bit extra on the angelfish here. So I want his fins to kind of um, be a little bit more wavy on the bottom. So I got th very thin yellow and I did very loose wavy lines kind of dangling down from that angelfish. Added a little bit more white into that yellow to brighten it up. And I'm gonna use the black to kind of touch up some of these black stripes in there. Make them a little bit thicker. And then I'm going to very, very loosely um, take this black, water it down slightly, um, but very loosely add the black down into the fins down below. So very loose wavy lines. And then I'm going to take the black and do some marks on the, the belly of the seahorse. So just little curved marks on his belly. Super, super detailed step. Um, you, Like I said, you don't have to do this. You can simplify it and leave that step out. Next, I'm going to do little dots for bubbles. So this is also optional, but a fun little effect. And um, all I'm doing is using that little tiny round brush and the white. Get some fresh titanium white on there. And making um, little clustered areas of dots. Actually, not really clustered, but they go in a curvy direction, a curvy line direction. Just little dots all throughout uh, wherever you feel like you want the little bubbles to show up. You can even have the little bubbles go around above one of the fish's mouth if that's something you want to do. Um, but just kind of all over wherever you want to add the little um, dot effect in your water. I then took the white and did little white um, dotted texture on the coral. I wasn't really thrilled with this, um, with doing this here, but I mean, it's up to you if you want to do that or not. It kind of gives a little bit of texture in the coral area, but it also made it too bright. I think I kind of liked how dark it was before I added the little white dots in that area, but something else that you can add. I'll be demonstrating the jellyfish next. So with these jellyfish, they're super light. So I'm gonna make kind of a pastel color with the orange. I'm mixing orange with white to make a light orange color. And I'm just gonna use, this is still that little round brush. I'm gonna draw out the top shape. So these are little jellyfish. Um, I'm drawing the bell shape first. So literally painting a bell shape. That top piece had a little bit more orange in it so that a curvy shape, a, um, a kind of a rounded bottom, and then the little jelly tentacles um, just add different variations of the white and the orange and very loosely paint um, curvy lines underneath the bell shape. So you can make it very, very basic, not too detailed because they're smaller up high in the distance. So same thing here. This one's quinacridone with a little bit of white. I'm going to wipe my brush off. Got overloaded with paint there. Um, making the bottom piece white and then I'm filling the top piece in with the quinacridone and then doing the tentacles and the little wavy lines paint the top piece curved at different variations of that quinacridone with the white very very loose wavy lines um, not a lot of paint on my brush so that almost um, kind of see-through just because there's not a lot of paint on my brush it runs dry super fast so that is it my friends this is the conclusion of our how to paint under the sea painting lots of details in this painting but i sure enjoyed it i hope that you enjoyed painting with me too and thanks for watching